Let's say there's a slave of Allah or a child of God. They're both positions of obvious subservience. Maybe, maybe I didn't make myself. Imagine now I'm saying, okay, you know what? It's not a physical child. Okay, imagine, it's not imagine, he's imagine, okay, he's imagine like, I say this. I'm going to form a football team for England. I'm not playing, that's what I would yeah. say. <laughs> You're not supporting anything? I'm not going to be chosen. Right. <laughs> and I say, look, I will choose 11 members for yes. that team. And according to according to the number of children that I have. Okay. Now, okay. what would people understand? That I have that if you special... Have daughters, you're going to have a no, no. Does it mean that I have somehow arbitrarily chosen certain people in England as my children what, amount to 11, or I literally have 11 children? I would, I would say that I would hear it as that you're going to choose the number according to the number of children you have. I have, exactly. Yes. That's my point. So this verse in Deuteronomy 32a could have been easily understood that way to have this literal it sense. Yeah. Yes. And this is why the scribes changed it to say according to the name of Israel, according to the angels of God, because of this difficulty. But now we know the earliest form of that text, it says according to the children of God. So this is an example from using the earliest extant documents. So you're just talking about the textual variants. No, not variant, not variant. Textual variants, sorry. Not variant. Well, I'm saying, saying when we look at... Remember, and this, some of them are Israel, some of them are God. My discussion of... But Israel the, the, was God's chosen the, people. The, the so. point I was only mentioning here is, when we have all this time that has passed, yes. have the scholarship and the priests of the rabbis of the Jewish and the Christians have preserved and transmitted this preserved word of God. What we find that this wasn't the case. I only give you one example. We, do you mean Muslim scholars? Scholarship, not Muslims. So you're this is scholarship. The Jewish and Christian scholars find that Schol it hasn't been no, no, preserved enough. Scholarship in general. Scholarship can be, you can be an atheist scholar, you uh -huh. can be a Jewish scholar, Muslim scholar, Christian scholar. Okay. A scholar is a so scholar. There's a consensus of opinion, is there? There's no, no. the majority. On this issue, it's quite clear that when we examine... That's not quite answering my question. I, I'm I'm going to do the majority of no. biblical scholars accept that there are too many of these okay. uh, omissions or additions? The or scholarship, regardless of so who, or who they are, they the pretty much agree that there has been, during the transmission of those texts, Some changes... errors. Well, not errors. There are intentional and non-intentional changes. Okay, so the non-intentional... Non-intentional, you can discount. Spelling mistakes yeah, and yeah. just... That happens, problem. that's yeah. normal. It's the intentional one. One of the very esteemed scholars well, I, of I, Christianity was I'm, called Brooks Metzger. Okay, I'm, have you heard I'm, of it? Yeah, I have. I'm, I'm going to just interject and say that I would agree because Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, have a version of the Bible that adds just an A in one verse. So it says in the... Well, that's from a translation. Yeah, but we're no, talking no, about no, manuscripts. I'm saying it changes the entire meaning. It says it does that Jesus is a God, not the it God. It does change Whereas the meaning. John, the correct. writer of that verse was clearly saying that the word was. I agree with you. It yeah. changes the meaning correctly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm simply saying, scholarship, and I gave you an example of a scholar, an esteemed scholar, liked by all kinds of people because he is special. because he is an expert of this field okay? he, he was a christian he's a religious man okay. yeah he was yep. a christian was uh, yeah passed away very oh, recently I'm right so roots metzger yeah he wrote a in, in, very prominent book called the is text of the new testament yeah. it's this book here if i were to show you a picture you can read this book because it's a scholarly reference the text of the New Testament. Okay. Yeah. It's transmission, corruption, and restoration. Okay. The subtitle tells you what it's about. That there has been corruption, and there has also been some restoration. Oh, he's going to discuss some. No, no. He gives examples. Yeah. He gives examples. My, of my point would be that because it's not a book-based religion, in that it's a personal Christianity, not Judaism, in that it's a personal relationship with God through the person of Jesus. I would say that even from the earliest writings from the church fathers, from the letters that were not included in the Bible, all of those documents, I don't think that if there was no Bible, there would be no Christians. If you say, like, I don't there will be Christians. No, yeah, exactly. And I'm saying, so it doesn't, so whereas the Quran is in and of itself a miracle, of, like it's a, 
even though the Bible is an esteemed, obviously, but I think that without it, not that I'm advocating that, it wouldn't change the relationship of mankind to God through Christ. So any spelling, even if it changes the word God to Israel, I can then think to myself, well, Israel was chosen by God. It, it, they were his chosen people. They kept disobeying, they kept disobeying. They just were ridiculous with the disobedience. And then Christ came along to be a sacrifice to cover their sins with his blood. And I understand the Muslims don't agree with that. But I can understand your position. point. The, the, the only reason I brought this up is to illustrate one, one point only, which is... When there is a historical figure, which is also a religious figure, like yes. Christ himself, yeah. he taught people. Yes. People he transmitted the Torah. He, Torah and the Gospel. And his, yeah. Yeah. People transmitted those information. They didn't just keep it themselves, right? I've got a point about that if you remind me. Okay. Can you remind us that she has a point on this, right? <laughs> so, people didn't keep it to themselves. No. They no, transmitted. They, they transmitted. Yeah. The question is, when this information was transmitted, do we have this transmission history from all the various peoples that were transmitted, or there has there already been? There's no chain of narration. There, or, or has there already been some suppression attempts? Okay, so my point would be that the fact that the earliest Christians, Jewish Christians, were writing to separate churches that were far from each other, the fact that those churches they were speaking about the beliefs and practices that they already uh, held. So they're not sending them word of how you, they are um, giving them advice on you should act this way, you should treat Gentiles this way, anyone who comes, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that they already had those beliefs showed that the earliest writings that we have, they're affirming those beliefs rather than transmitting them, if that makes sense. They're saying, look, we know you have this church and we would really like it if you could make sure that on a Saturday, you know, those little details. But the fact that all of those little letters went to different geographical locations, they all preserved the teaching in as much as those letters match up. So if, if we've got copies or uh, evidences of those early church fathers' writings, it's not a chain of narration, but we know who's wrote them. We know that Paul was a prolific writer. You know, he wrote to this church, this church, the seven churches, all of these different... And because they were scattered, or not scattered, but because they had travelled away, the fact that they then match up again, and when I see it happen, even though they're omitting stuff, they're not... I don't believe that there were any additions in that not first century writing. Do you see what I mean? Like, I don't think they were saying, oh, we're just going to add this bit. I, I, wasn't, they, I wasn't referring to these... Um, no, I understand, but you said, you said, can can we verify? But my, 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 my evidence is not limited to these writings that are survived through the church but that fathers. That's my point about the Bible. But, if it was, if yeah, it was completely changed. But, but if you, if you, if you yeah. just um, try to engage on my point on this point, the evidence I'm not restricting to these writings that are preserved in the New Testament. I see. I'm saying the picture that we have from the surviving writings yes. of the early Christianity is quite different than what you are now going to present. For example. Early you mean translation, you mean no, literally no, no, the no, 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 I'll explain to you. There are so many different forms of early Christianity. Yes. Before, orthodoxy, as you know today, became orthodoxy. Yeah. Some, early Christian, some early Christians yeah. believed in two gods. You'd be surprised and shocked. Was How it could the they? Spirit and the Father? I think it was, well, because no, it was Christ's you'd divinity. Be, you'd was... be naturally shocked. How can the Christians believe in two gods? Two gods. But you're God. so shocked that we be, you think we believe no, in no. three. But sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no. One God which is good and one God which is bad. The Satan. Would you? Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that he is a God. And they say they're Christians. That's my point. So, there are still heretical give an example. Christians around. There are Christians. They were heterogeneous yeah. in their belief in the first 300 to 400 years of Christianity. Yes, I can right. accept that. A very because the scholarly God. book written by Bert Ehrman, the agnostic. Warwick so, was a heretic, wasn't it? Like a Christian. Warwick, uh, the uncle. Okay, I'm let's not, let's, a Christian let's who, not bring. In 600 years let's not later, bring. Who were still against different the form. broad teaching of the yes. church. Yeah. yeah. So in early, early Christianity was not like a monolithic. A, a particular form that is today today like a Trinitarian, no, right? Of years so we of had within this early Christian history, church fathers, yeah. church fathers writing books yeah. called against heresies. Now yes. think about it. 
It's very important to reflect on heresy if it's not well. Why would a church father need to write books to 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 condemn and clarify to the believers there are heretical Christians. Okay, I would say, unless, unless. Ah, uh, you've got the answer already. Go ahead. I've got enough. I would say because in the New Testament it teaches if anyone teaches a gospel other than this, they are, and they, you know, they're, they're, they're to be uh, rebuked, they're to be uh, taught. Very good point. Very good point. There, there so what is Christ? Very know, good. Very good. I appreciate um, your, your knowledge and understanding on this. So what this establishes is that it wasn't from the earlier time one particular narrative about the teaching of Christ transmitted. No, just there were, there were other people who transmitted a different or different teaching. I would say and this is differing. Different. Yes. Okay, let's different, agree with that. Different. different. Let's agree yes. with that. Differing teaching from the very earlier on, which prompted prominent church fathers to, to write books to say, don't follow them. Yes. They are not following right. the true Christianity, yeah. right. Yeah. But what it shows is that there are existing people who form sort of belief system which were not necessarily the same as today. One group clearly was condemned by the origin yeah. or oh, yeah, I know, um, yeah. some of the church fathers, yeah. uh, Irenaeus, yeah. were the people who don't, didn't believe in Christ as being divine. crucified. Crucified. Remember, yes. Remember, one of the one of the things that is now levied against Islam by Christian. Yeah, there can be no salvation without the blood of Christ, and if yeah, yeah. Islam believes Christians, he crucified, yeah. then Christians, -Christian. Christians often come and say crucifixion is an undeniable, undisputable fact well, it's very of history. history. Oh, please, please. Yeah. My point here. My point. Christians often tell us yes. this is un yeah. undisputable, yeah. undisputable okay. event of history. Uh, this is where we would disagree. There are ample evidence surviving from the Christians themselves saying they are a large they enough body of people who did not believe Christ was crucified. Because, because they saw him alive again once no, no, he was no, risen. Five hundred the, 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 question, the question is not about what form no, they fine. saw. You can interpret it in different ways, right? Yeah. In fact, it's interpreted somehow like these people didn't believe that Christ can suffer bodily. So yeah. they said he cannot no, suffer. No, so various forms yeah. of this but what it establishes is this, this crucifixion is not like that's what it says and Islam gets it all wrong. In fact, to clarify that point, Quran doesn't even deny a crucifixion happening. Does it's it simply, not, can it's I simply, just ask then about a verse? What did you says, think? I think it says that they boasted that they killed him, but mm -hmm. they slew him not. It was just made to appear to them as if he had been killed. So it appeared to them. The it's a, a, yeah. Imagine, um, I use so this example to. So it appeared. Yep, okay, imagine, are. imagine now, people walking over there yep. and they're seeing you and saying, okay. We have seen the princess of Spain having a discussion in Speaker's Corner and yeah. they went and go and start talking about it in their social media and so on and so forth, yeah. thinking you are the princess, the princess of Spain. Yeah, okay. Now, I'll take the paycheck, but I mean, I'm not. That's their mistaken. Yes. What? Yes. So that means that it, that perception that I am not, but I'm saying yeah. that Christ so, was crucified no, and rose point, again. The Quran, the way the Quran describes this event. Do you say that Islam teaches Christ crucified or not? I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. Who was but I want to. The Jews I want to. I want to answer this question by saying what the Quran says first of all. Okay. Yep. Quran categorically affirms that he was not crucified or killed. Right? Okay, so then but, there's a but, huge disagreement. But, here. but, yeah. what the Quran doesn't say is that there was no such, such crucifixion ever happening or not. So it simply says, people mistakenly perceived yeah. that Christ was being crucified. Okay, so and the Quran rejects that claim yes, and so denies I, that claim. I would say then there are two things. There are that Christ now must be in heaven alive like bodily in his Islamic, you know, how if he didn't die, where is he? If he was taken immediately up by Allah, why? Because if he was righteous, Allah, I, I believe he prescribed to sacrifice and that kind of thing previous. I don't know. Is that, is right. it just so again, very, very, my very, other very logical my and other, important question to ask. My other point would be that Muhammad came at least, say, 600 years, 625 years after these events. And um, these events were already being preached by Christians as a redemptive factor in their salvation. 
uh, apart from repentance. That's, and trust that's why it makes it so, very significant. And I would say it makes it counter Christian because it is then denying the blood of Christ as a, as a, as a sole way to heaven. Spot on. Christ himself said he is the only yeah, yeah. way. So, so spot on huge theological that's, difference, yeah, right? Definitely. So what we believe is Allah took him up yeah. and he's in second heaven. Only and second. He was, no, in heaven. No, no, no. This heaven. heaven is not the paradise. Which heaven is Mohammed in? No, he's not in heaven. Why not? Because I'm this, sure uh, this, there's a hadith. Uh, no, 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 let, me, let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. When we talk about when we talk about these heavens, yeah. we're not talking about paradise. Right. We're not talking about the Quran talks about this. You know, they you know they, they had human bodies. Nothing happened to that. So even if Christ is went up there. Doesn't matter I just if it's wondered, does it say so specifically? No. Are there hadith no. or something that talks I don't about think it, it does. Okay. But it's understood that he's alive and God is the one who provides the sustenance, right? The point, keeping him alive. So when he's going to come down and descend, he has two major roles to play. Two major roles. One is to fight the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not Prophet Muhammad according to what some Christians believe. No, I think the Antichrist is a supernatural entity. Fair I enough. believe there are Fair humans enough. who have anti-Christian sure. or anti-Christ. So an Antichrist has only been um, taught or warned by many prophets in the past because he is a he is what we call fitna in Arabic, which is like um, tribulation. Tribulation. Because this individual will come a place and make the whole world under his control in, in various ways because of technological advancements perhaps and the world will be really in, 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 in tribulation so he's a dangerous individual he will declare himself to be the one that like God God so people shouldn't be worshiping God believing in him instead so this individual will be killed that's why he's called Antichrist. Yeah. Christ will, Christ will, Christ will eliminate him, kill him, and then he will establish on this earth a peaceful, peaceful coexistence of this earth, about 40 years or so. Okay, 40 years or so, where people, people will be believing in God. Okay, and he will establish justice and peace on this earth according mercy? to God's law of course mercy he is now he also Quran and our hadith reports he will break the cross and kill the pigs these are symbolic now these are symbolic um, utterance to imply that those people who worshipped him as God sorry to disappoint you now I don't believe a word of it so right, right, right. Yeah, of course fine but that's our tradition yeah that he will make it clear to them that's not acceptable because I am not God I am the creation of God, who is the Messiah. So yep. when he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, I am the first and the last, how do you get, I, I, I'm not sure you okay. can get So let's discuss that. No, no, I'm getting around. No, 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 I'm saying I'm sure you have a, a, a way to say that that's not your belief and, you know, that that doesn't make him equal to the law. And that's confirmed by the heavy business. Yeah. When, when somebody says I'm Alpha and Omega, right? now, a specific name of Allah. Allah's name is Alpha and Omega. No. Uh, Alpha doesn't mean first. Okay, Omega no, doesn't mean last. Okay, These are so just letters of the alphabet. It repeats that. It says, Christ says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. So it's two separate uh, okay. titles that he's claiming. But wouldn't that be a problem in your understanding? No, it wouldn't be a problem in my understanding. What about no. the Father? Is he Alpha? Uh, yes. God but, is the first and the last. No, no, talk, let's talk about individually. Is Christ Alpha or the Father Alpha? No. So how can they say I am the only? He didn't say I'm the only Alpha. He said I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And I believe he is the God, and so is the Father, and so is the Spirit. So they're not count. They're not contradictory. If I say all three of them are those, have those attributes because they're three. I'm sure you understand the Trinity. You just don't accept it. Like I don't have to explain the actual. You know, they're one in purpose. They're one in authority. They're one in power. They're one in essence. They're all that. Apart did they from the choose, incarnation. Did they choose to be um, together? No. Did they? Did they exercise their choice to remain together? I imagine so. I don't know if it's possible. For what them was to it be forced? Apart. Was it forced? By who? Who could force God to do anything? Yeah. Exactly. Who? I'm asking so, you. Who? Yeah. If it's not forced, it's by choice. Well, that means. Or it's just. A, I can't choose to separate. I can choose to separate my leg. I can't choose to separate out something. Can the father choose to separate from the son? Yes. 
That means they have a choice. Not, no, not in, not in terms of a disagreement or a separation. Can they disagree? Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, Are they independent enough to disagree? Uh, yes, Christ could have acted. He could have, but he was sinless, so he didn't. But as a man, he could have said God, something. God. No, whilst they're in one essence. No, I don't think, I, I'm not so, a theologian, but I don't so, think this so. Is, this is where the Trinitarian understanding or anything that has more than one absolute being, it's a real difficult question for people to accept.